Let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are making the large transponster tote from Sincerely Jen Patterns. I had so much fun making this. Um, I made it for my mom, so I hope she loves it. The bag she carries is about this big, if not a little bit smaller, honestly. Um, I absolutely love the crossbody strap. I love the materials I used. Um, I used a little bit of Decaville heavy, a little bit of Decaville light, um, but I do have a video going over how to interface this bag and cut it out. If you're interested, it has this huge zipper panel. Like, this baby is massive. Like, I feel like a small sewing machine would fit in here. Like the head of a Juki definitely would. Um, unzip that and it is a zipper panel that's meant to kind of like open to the top. There's a large zipper pocket here. I did cut mine smaller than the pattern instructs. So I'm kind of glad I did because woo, what a big pocket. That's what she said. Um, there is no pocket on the other side, but my mom had requested like a key holder. So I've got one there for her. And uh, that's pretty much it. I made the medium size of this bag and I really liked it, but I'm thinking that if I make the medium one, I'm not sure if I will, um, I'm going to like that size the most because this is such a nice bag proportionally. The small one felt a little weird, but this one feels right proportionally. Um, I did add some height to the handles, but only by like an inch or two, um, and other than that, Let's, let's sew it. Let's make it. You want to make it with me? Come on. Let's go. All right. Let's get to sewing the large transponster. Transponster? I hardly know her. <laughs> uh -oh. Hated it as soon as I said it. Okay. We've got the whole world in our hands. I got like all the wrong hardware. That's that's for sure. Okay. I'm going to start with my pockets. Those big old slip pockets. I'm going to first top stitch and then I'm going to add the overlay vinyl. Um, this is so my layers don't shift. Last time I made the medium, I just used like a really big piece of tape and I, I'm not, I didn't love it. So I'm like, well, I won't do that again. Um, when I made the medium as well, um, the measurements were just a little bit off. So this should be closer to the final pattern. I'm still um, making this based off of the tester, but I believe it's been tested enough that it's good. I am using um, Tex 90? Tex 80 from Wizardry. This is the Fairy Floss. This is one of the best threads. Alright, one of the best thread colors. Like, the quality is pretty good, but the colors are just so perfect. Um, especially with the Rainbow Watercolor Roses um, and this vinyl, like, I could not find anything that matched perfectly, so I was like, well, pastel rainbow, always a good option. Like, look at that. So pretty.
The pattern calls for one slip pocket, but I am adding two. I just feel like it's such an easy add-on that you may as well. Um, using rose gold, I'm going to add a nameplate. I may have to show a side-by-side -side photo of the size differences. Um, I know Jenny will have made all of the sizes as well. So if you're looking for the pattern designer's original video, this ain't it. Okay. So now we're going to grab our two exterior panels. I'm like intimidated. It's so big. That's so I'm going to center the slip pocket. Okay, I went ahead and um, made it so that my pocket is 11 inches tall. Um, it's possible that when I put the pieces together, um, I didn't quite use the right seam allowance or maybe the bulk added to the height, but I just want to make sure that it is completely out of the way feel good about that. I'm going to baste this down in the center. Make sure to keep it flat as you go and make sure that your stabilizer is at the top of the bag. I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So I'm just making sure my pattern is 11 tall. For some reason it's not. So we're going to make sure it is.
Now I'm going to grab one of my webbing straps. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. I cut mine a little bit longer. Not by much, but just by enough um, for my mom's sake. And then I think I'm going to wait to alter the straps. Um, just because the one my mom is using now, the straps aren't, they don't have that accent piece. I don't know that she's going to love it. And I can make that change, no problem. So for the large size, it's going to be four inches in from that side. So I'm going to add some tape. We're going to be sewing 11 and a half inches up. So I'm just going to do 11 inches of tape on the base of the webbing. And I am just lining up the edge of that webbing with the edge of the ruler. So got my four inches in from the side edge. Make sure that you're looping your webbing so that there is no twisting. And up at the bottom edge and just pressing it in place. Make sure there's a nice loop. And then the pattern says 11 and a half up. And I may end up adding some rivets to this as well, just because it's such a heavy bag. is literally perfect. And then I know that I'm going to be attaching the bottom panel, so I'll just go ahead and do that now anyway. I'm going to laugh so hard if my mom's like, I think it's too big.
I'm trying to decide if I want to, like, I don't think I'm going to alter the straps. And if I were going to, I think I might just do the faux rolled handle look instead of adding that overlay. Anyway. Eleven inches of tape. We're going to make a mark 11 and a half from the top, or from the bottom, and this gets placed four inches in from the side edge. Again, this is for the large size. It varies for all sizes, so make sure you're checking the pattern instructions on what you should be doing. Before you sew anything down, just make sure your strap is not twisted. So what just happened was one of the previous threads got caught and caused that nesting, but all right, come on. absolutely love the way the webbing looks with this vinyl. It's super pretty. Okay. 
put those down. Top stitching on the bottom panel. So now, before I move on to my side panels. I'm just going to snip my centers. And I'll set that aside. <clears throat> because now we're going to sew the darts in our side panels. So this is not a place to cut the triangle. This is just where we're going to sew it. So we're sewing on that marked line at the bottom. Make sure to line that up. Then I'm going to trim away excess fabric. On the waterproof canvas, I don't think it'll make as much of a difference, but on the vinyl, it definitely added bulk that I did not need to my side seams when I made the schmedium. So I figured we'll clean that up now. Beep. So cute. I already have my centers marked on the top and the bottom, so now I just need to prepare my connectors. That's my key hanger. Those are my connectors and a handle. Okay. And these are my D-ring connectors. I folded long raw edges in and top stitched. And now I'm cutting it in half and grabbing my D-rings. These are one inch D-rings. We're going to fold these in half. And center these on that side panel. And then this actually, they go inside the bag. It's pretty cool. I am pushing it into the seam allowance about a quarter of an inch just to have a little extra Um, and then my mom wanted a little key ring within the bag too, so I'm adding a quarter inch, nope, a three quarter inch key ring. So I've cut this piece to one and a half wide by I think eight inches long. Yep. 
and I'm just going to top stitch the long raw edges and then fold around the snap hook. And I'm just going to sew a line down the center to hold it together. You can either do like a T or a single line. I gotta think about this because it's gonna sit in the seam the same way another like the d-ring would and we want the d-ring up like this but I don't want the snap hook up like this I want it down so I may have to wait and add this in a different seam like maybe along the side of the bag at an angle well, that's cute actually I kind of like that Sure. Why not? Make sure it's underneath the fold so that I'm not top stitching through it. That'll work. Okay, so um don't add this to where I thought this is not the lining, so I will worry about that later. This is my exterior. <laughs> Alright, I'm starting to add the side panel. So what I'm doing first is clipping it to the bottom so that I can baste it into place. And then line it up along the side, the top. Now it's too quiet. Okay, so I've added a couple clips. I feel like this is definitely a big enough curve that I'm not going to have any issues. Just keep that half inch seam allowance in mind. Oh yeah, I was going to oil the machine. Going around that seam. It really is a nice wide curve, so keeping your seam allowance and keeping those layers straight shouldn't be too, too bad. Just go nice and slow. Pull on the fabric a little bit as you need to to add some tension. machine does not sound happy. 
<laughs> my god. I think this is bigger than the bag my mom carries. Uh, it's going to be great. Also, I have to keep in mind that um, you lose an inch of your exterior that gets shoved down into the lining. So... We've got the other side clipped. Make sure you're back stitching at the start and end of that seam. And then I'm just going to trim down along the curve of the bag. Is what we're looking at size wise it's so big <laughs> next step I'm gonna work on is technically the lining um, but I'm gonna do those side panels really quick lining side panels Knees go together that same method. So on that line, we're not cutting away those lines. So I know that one of the bottom lining panels does not get a pocket, or I should say one of the lining main panels does not get a pocket, so I'm just going to go ahead and attach my lining. I'm 
The zipper pocket is plenty big enough to turn this bag through, so I don't need to leave a turning hole within the bottom. that so then I just need my zipper pocket and zipper pocket overlay I did not get any zippers so I'm gonna need that too um, if you watched my cutting video you'll know that I shortened the pocket to 12 inches instead of whatever she had. Yeah, so it's 12 inches wide of an overlay, which means it'll be about 11 inch, 10.75 of zipper tape. Um, this is gonna be placed an inch from the top, but I think I'm gonna do an inch and a half just to be safe. Because it's a pretty big overlay and I don't want it to be like right at that seam the zipper pocket normally it makes perfect sense but with the overlay I don't want that fabric caught in that top seam I'm going to add a woven label. I'm going to cut that open. I'm going to grab two pieces of zipper tape, adding my zipper poles. I have one really long zipper. This is going to become the top zipper for my bag. And this is my zipper pocket zipper tape. I'm using pop tab pulls from my website. And now to attach our zipper to this fabric, you want the lining fabric facing up and your zipper facing up. I line up one raw edge of my pocket to one raw edge of my zipper and base that in place and you want your linings right sides together. I'm 
and then I'm top stitching that flat. So you might be able to use your iron to get those fabrics to lay flat. For some reason it just doesn't work for me. And then I'm going to use double sided tape along those stitch lines so that I can hold my zipper in place. And you want to line up the edges of your lining with the edges of your overlay. And then make sure that your zipper is nice and centered within that overlay. I've got my zipper pull hanging off the side and I'm going to top stitch up here. And then before you finish, make sure you push your zipper pull into that seam. Finish it off. Now this bag is going to be turned through that zipper pocket, so we need to leave the bottom open. So I'm going to lay this down. Clip it. I'm going to trim my excess zipper tape and I'm going to trim my excess lining fabric. Flipping this and I'm going to flip up on that seam so I'm sewing through four layers of fabric. If you use another method, I would love to know down below what your preferred method for a zipper pocket is. Um, and if you haven't used this method at the bottom of a turn hole zipper pocket, you should try it. And if you have used it and you don't like it, you should tell me why. And also tell me your favorite color or what size shoe you wear. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. <clears throat> All right, and then I'm folding that open. And I'm gonna seam roll it nice and flat. Okay. So I'm going to snip the center of the top here. as well as the other side. I'm going to set all these together and work on my zipper panel. This is pretty much the last big step of the bag. And how dare I not pre-tape all of this? Dang it. I didn't measure on the waterproof canvas either. Uh, oh well.
<laughs> I'm sitting here thinking about how Jenny's video is probably going to be like five hours for this bag. It's just so huge. Oh my god, Becky, it is so big. Oh, I didn't even tape this side. <laughs> They're like nesting dolls in the size categories. Honestly, the most satisfying but terrifying part of this bag is sewing up the sides of the bag, and I'm definitely not going to get to that before I have to leave to pick up Dorothy for my present self in this video. You'll never know. Well, you might know. I'm going to be four times more exhausted <laughs> next time you see me. So I'm going to singe the ends of the zipper tape at an angle. We're going to start with one of our exteriors. And lay that down. And then grab one of the lining pieces. Now I've got this edge is uneven. It's lined up really well on the other, but this one doesn't look so great. The brilliant thing about the tape, if I can just untape it and try again. Shit, can I? <laughs> okay. There was just a little cut in the fabric and it wouldn't rip up anymore, which is good. Perfect. And then we'll sew next to, but not through the zipper teeth, starting in about an eighth of an inch in from that edge. and then stopping about an eighth of an inch from the other edge because you don't want to see where your stitches start and stop when you flip the zipper panel over.
this panel is massive. <laughs> and like it truly fits with the size of the bag, but my goodness, what a bag. Snipping those centers. Okay. Now I'm going to take the side without the bottom panel attached. I'm going to clip that zipper panel to it. and baste it into place. I should have known that's what that noise was. Other side of the lining. Make sure you've got bottom, bottom, top to top. Keep your zipper pocket out of the way. Line those up. I'm sewing next to but not through my stabilizer. I did not add any stabilizer to my lining pieces other than the bottom panel, but I am using waterproof canvas which is already, it's already got more structure than like a normal cotton woven. So keep that in mind when you're putting together your pieces. And then I'm folding the lining down towards the bottom. And then I'm bringing this up to meet my other center mark. Clipping and basting. I think, I think I'm going to put this in the top seam here, kind of under or next to. I think next to the zipper panel is good. Because then it's also like a security feature if you want to like lock it, I guess. I'm going to do that. Hopefully I don't regret it when it comes time to top stitch it all together. But I feel like there is some wiggle room.
Okay, that's what we're looking at. This is the top of the bag. So now I'm going to find my bottom centers and attach my side panels. Line up the bottom curve first, and if you want to, you can baste to stitch that down before you move on to the rest of the bag. And then lining up the top side. Clipping all that together. I am debating currently if I regret not adding Decaville light to the main lining panels. I really don't think you need a ton of interfacing in the side panels because of the structure that the final top stitching gives it. And like anything more that you add is just going to be a struggle later. Does that make sense? Like you're just gonna be fighting with more structure, basically. Make sure your seam allowance is consistent. You, doesn't, you don't necessarily want to scant the size or increase the size of your stitch length within the lining because of the method of that being like tucked into itself and sewn together. And then we can just trim down the curved area. And then repeat on the other side. I'm kind of using my elbow to help me push the layers of the bag through. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see it. Um, oh, okay. 
I was like, I almost forgot my key ring thing. But I didn't. I already added it. Yay. All right. So now we're going to turn our lining right side out to put inside of our exterior. Unzip that zipper panel. Make sure your zipper pocket is open. Massive. <laughs> so massive. All right, so now we're going to put the lining that's right side out into the exterior that is wrong side out. Line up your side seams. And I am just nesting the seams. So I'm turning them in opposite directions. I'm not gonna try to butterfly them open. And then I'm going to top stitch these layers together with the um, side with the interfacing face up so that I can just follow right along that edge of the interfacing. <laughs> My God. <It's laughs> I don't, I think it's too big. <laughs> Mom probably won't, but we'll see. Okay. So as I'm top stitching, I'm making sure that my layers stay lined up, making sure I don't sew through my D-rings.
Okay. <laughs> so now we're gonna open up our zipper pocket. We're gonna separate our lining from the exterior. And then we're gonna grab the exterior bottom and pull that through first. Cause you wanna start with what's furthest away from that zipper pocket. Try to get everything through. I definitely wouldn't go smaller than the 12 inch pocket on this size bag. I know that's why Jenny has such a generous size <laughs> zipper. <laughs> I almost said hole. She's got a, a generous sized hole. <sighs> Sorry, Terry. <laughs> okay. So I've got the bottom out, so now I can just shimmy the rest free as well. Cool beans. Yeah, is this had Decaville light all over the whole thing? Yowza. My hands would be killing me. Press out the side seams. Make sure you've caught all of your seams on your zipper panel, etc. Okay. And now you can. I'm gonna burp the bag and I'm gonna sew this pocket shut. This has to be one of the biggest bags I've ever made. My goodness. The um, large Tribbiani travel bag, I feel like might be the biggest. I've not made that size. I only make the small, but <laughs> this is so big. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew that shut really quick. Now we can put lining inside the bag. I don't even know what I would use a bag this big for myself. My mom carries it's basically like a suitcase for her. Insane. Got that big zipper packet. I'm gonna zip that shut now so that I know it's done. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find that Decaville Heavy and we're gonna fold the bag down on that. Luckily, it is now all the way across the top panel. When I made the medium, it wasn't part of the pattern, but that feels really, really nice. I'm gonna like straighten this up. Oh. 
And then I think I have to top stitch this another day. So this is the size of it. Um, and then keep in mind too that we are going to then sew these panels like this. We're going to make sure we catch our lining and exterior. Let's sew all that together. Also, just a reminder, glitter clips are plastic, just like anything else, and they can't last forever. I always get so sad when I see people posting, like, these suck, all my clips are broken, and I'm like, they're plastic. They just, they break. I'm sorry. But they're pretty, right? Did they make you happy while they existed? <laughs> they served their purpose. but I get it. So I've got my hand in the side seam, massaging that flat. And none of this right now feels like my machine, my industrial can't handle it, um, but if you have a domestic, I would just be very careful, very mindful of the materials you use. nice <laughs> smack my bag all right so I'm gonna top stitch the very top edge of the bag first and then I'm gonna do the second row You have to make sure that you keep your zipper panel face down for this top stitch. And then for the next one, you go under it. So that it sits like a perky zipper panel. I have my stitch length set to five and I'm really liking the way it looks especially on how massive this bag is. I'm folding my D-ring down out of the way as I'm top stitching. I know I already said it, but that Decaville at the top just makes it so easy to top stitch that edge. I love the way it feels. I think 
now I don't know if I want to top stitch it this way and just feel through the layers I guess I probably should um yeah okay let's do that I think it's telling me to do this with the exterior down and the lining facing up. And I'm just gonna go around that, making sure to move my handles out of the way as well. So I've got my zipper panel up I'm feeling through those layers and making sure that everything is nice and flat. And then saying, Jesus, take the wheel. I did do it out of order by top stitching the very top first, but it's more like I just couldn't break the habit of that. So then we're going to make sure our D-ring is pointing up and out of the way and we're just top stitching directly on the lining top edge pointing our seam allowance down. So here's what that's looking like on the exterior. <clears throat> okay, so here's another fun place. Making sure our zipper panel is up. Handles are down, out of the way. And then my key ring thing here. Okay, come on. Um, I'm gonna make sure it's pointing up as well, just so the seam sits better. It looks so good. Okay, I was I was scared. So since this side is mostly clipped, I'll go ahead and see if I can do this one side before I take a break. And I am going to be sewing this with the lining side facing up exterior side down so keep that in mind but here is what that looks like let's go ahead and try it 
half an inch seam allowance. I'm starting like an eighth of an inch from the top and back stitching up closer to the top. And then carrying on. That half an inch is so you definitely catch your lining and the major bulk of your seam allowance is not what you're sewing through. You're basically sewing next to it. And so again, I'm using my elbow to push out the side of the bag. to help me around the curve. Definitely wanna make sure you're not out of bobbin before you start this. Okay, and here is what that looks like. Oh man, I got a little pucker. Okay. Um, snip it. Let's see if I can't fix it from the opposite side. Having the side panel, that contrast fabric, kind of peeks through, but I think an all monotone would be really nice too. Looks good from the lining side, because then you know for sure, like, your lining is in there. It's not going anywhere. Hard to show you what this bag really is like because it's so big. <laughs> all right, so pressing all my lining pieces together, I'm gonna start folding down. Side panel, starting at the top.
I can definitely feel the difference that the um, Decaville light is making within the lining on the bottom panel. It's nice. Nice. Okay, unfortunately. So I will probably top stitch this last side off camera and we'll get a feel for what it looks like here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish top stitching the side. Again, that's a half inch seam allowance in. Starting at the top. Clipping as I go. Leave your needle in as you reposition. threads through finish that off I had a little nesting here it sucks it's okay though I'm finishing off my zipper with the zipper end hardware you could also use just a fabric end as described in the pattern. I really like the zipper ends that I carry. They are um, my original sizing. They're an XL zipper end, so the zipper tape fits really easily inside. And it's chunky and heavy. I love it. Oh, I didn't screw it in all the way. <laughs> Yay. Let's try that again. And that's why you always test it, 100%. And it never hurts to add a little bit of glue for that reason. much better. Um, I've got the handles folded just to kind of see what I, how I felt about them, but now it's just weird because there's clips on them. But I can always make adjustments later as well. I don't think it's too bad. My mom's just gonna arm crook it. She might even worry, well I worry she might complain they're not long enough for her but they look good on the bag as just like simple grab handles. So let's go ahead and finish the bag um, by making that crossbody strap. Keep the bags, your hardware came in, send them back to us. We love reusing them. So 
adding double-sided tape. to the biggest section. And then this is for one inch hardware on the base and then one and a half everywhere else. So I need a slide adjuster and a square ring that are one and a half. And we are going to create a snap hook basically with this square ring. So this slides down in there. Line up all those edges. You can use tape or you can use glue. must say I do really like the feel of the stabilizer within that seam. So when I'm across the top and pivot at the corner and then across the bottom and then back up. A few stitches, pivot, and then come back up to the other side. And any uneven edges, you can just kind of trim to match. So this becomes one end. And then we're gonna grab our slide adjuster. Wrap this around. Um, you can also add a piece of vinyl to the end of your slide adjuster. I like the look of that. Um, I do have slim square rings and sliders coming. Because I know with the wider sliders, the webbing can tend to slip and not stay where you put it. So now we're going to take our finished piece and slide that through one side, up, over, make sure there is no looping, everything sits nice and flush, and then we can add the other side of our webbing, as I was saying. We can add the other side of our webbing. When you're pivoting this corner, it couldn't hurt to just protect your hardware and vinyl. A little piece of something.
Can't wait to get a template for that piece. I really like the end of the strap, but with paper and my skill level, not great. Look how cute. So that is it for the large transponster. Um, I was messaging Jenny like, this is huge. And she's like, oh, should I make it smaller? And I was like, no, it's kind of your thing to make the larges so extravagantly large. Not a great view, Lauren. So, um, in summation, I definitely wish I had added the grab handle accent. I think it would look just that much more professional. Um, but I don't regret the amount of interfacing I used in the bag. Like, it's not heavy and it's a lot of materials. And <clears throat> I don't know, I just love it. These big old slip pockets look fantastic. I hope my mom loves it. Um, I'll try to include a video of her shoving it full of things. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to hear what your favorite size of the Transponster bag is. And I'll see you later. Bye.